Ladies and gentlemen, the next time you see us, we will be in Australia. Underwhelming. Australia. You ready, mates? That's what that's what they say in Australia, right? Mate and stuff. Seafood. We're gonna go eat some seafood now. Shellfish. Actually. Today in Warrington, Australia, part one. We are going to try three different seafood dishes at three drastically different price points to find out which one is the most worth it at its price. Seafoods are my favorite foods. Are they really? <sighs> you know how you can have like more than one favorite kid? I've never had kids, so I can't really speak to that. Yeah, me neither. We are on our way to the Sydney Fish Market. It is going to be epic. Heard about you it. I haven't been there yet. You just Google pictures. I mean, people just Google our show to find out about seafood. Same thing. <laughs> There's a pelican right outside our car. It's beautiful. Alrighty, let's go pelican. Oh, I get it now. Ocean trout. That one. Fish head. No touching. The large coral trout. Blue crabs. Orange crabs. The cutest fish. The cuttlefish. Let me see those prawns. The tigers. Brom, 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 brom. Hi, my name is Bissis. You are at Doyle's here. We have different kinds of oysters, specific in Sydney Rock. Whatever you want, you can try it over here. So you guys are sourcing these specific oysters from literally the place that is on the sign, right? Yeah, they are like dealers that we get the oysters from. Not all the lot taste the same. If ah. they are from the different harvest, when the new lot comes, I try it. So I, I'm better confident, so I can explain it to customers what it actually tastes like. Coffin Bay, Pacific oysters, well, salty oysters. Sydney Rock, they are more of a strong flavor, creamy and sweet. Creamy and sweet sounds nice. Yeah, the truth is that I I had my oysters a year and a half ago. The first that I tried, I really didn't like it, but gradually I loved it and right now I'm addicted to oysters. You don't get the texture and the flavor of oyster anywhere else. And there are people that really love oysters. Like when I gave them oysters and their facial expressions, you know, you know like they are really enjoying it. It makes me happy to see them happy as well. So how many are you gonna get? You wanna get uh... I think we should just get two of each. Who eats one oyster? Well, we're gonna eat one of many different kinds. Am I crazy? <laughs> yes, you're crazy. We should get one for uh, Adam as well, though. All right. I have never been more excited in my life than this moment. I have to confess, I haven't been won over yet. I Wait, was... seriously? Yeah, seriously. Wait, that makes me so sad, though. The oysters are so good! I know, and I'm trying really hard, but they are just snot rocks. Let's uh, shuck these oysters. We're gonna start with the Coffin Bay. Twist it and uh, shave it inside the sides, and then uh, voila. Let's see who does it better. Pat! Now that just doesn't look Fabulous. Cheers to Sydney. Mm. Oh yeah. That is the saltiest oyster I've ever had. I'm not disgusted. It just, you know, it became one with me. I mean, when you're doing an episode about seafood, that is as pure a taste of the sea as I think we're gonna get. You wanna go with the uh, Sydney Rock now? I'm very curious to see the differences between these. That's the funnest part about eating oysters, is you get these tight little packages, and each one is gonna be a little bit different. That is very pretty ugly. Ugly delicious. That's what, uh, that's what David Chang says. Holy sh! Yeah, dog. That is that, so oh, good. Oh, whoa! That was like, like a delicate cheese. Imagine a world where humans have not ruined the world with our smog. An ocean beach, amazing waves, and that fresh breeze of air. That is that oyster perfection. I could eat a dozen of those, and that's the first time I've ever thought that about an oyster. You an oyster boy now? I think I might be an oyster boy now. Birds are going ham. Birds right know now. what's up. They're oyster boys too. That was crazy. I've had a lot of oysters in my life. The American ones don't stand a chance at this. I'm sorry. Woo! That was easily my favorite location, food, anything that we've ever done in the show. Australian seafood fact. Oh dear, don't do that. Did you know that the Australian seafood industry is about $2.8 billion? With a B? With a B for big ones. Just by looking at a atlas of the world, you know that Australia is getting some great fish. So we're on the way to the next location, which I cannot imagine can come close to that kind of experience that we just had. But, wow, we are sure try. As is the premise of the show. Nice, 
Brent Savage. I'm chef owner of Sirius Restaurant. Sirius for us is all about seafood. What we wanted to serve at Sirius, in our minds, it was always to be simple, it was to be accessible, it was to be sustainable and not add too many flavors so it brings out the best in each piece. Today's dish that we're going to have is a, it's live marin. Forgive me, but what is a marin? So marin is Australian freshwater crayfish. The flavor of marin is actually quite strong, so it can tolerate other flavors with it. We're going to split the marin in half. We're going to clean out the head, fill it with a little bit of marin butter, which we've made from the shells of marin. Place a little bit of salt over it, simply cook it over the charcoal. I don't like cooking just about anything in water. All water really does is reduce the amount of flavor. Bring it off the heat, let the residual heat slowly cook the remainder of the flesh through. We're gonna serve it with a yuzu kosher sauce. Yuzu kosher is a type of ferment. We have the native herbs, which is sort of burst of saltiness. We're finishing the dish with a little bit of finger lime. Finger lime is an ingredient which is native to Australia. So you've got layers of the sweet meat, sour from the finger lime, salty from the herbs. It's a, quite a delicious dish. So we started the day off a little casual, but now we're getting a little serious. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably the best pond you've ever done. Okay, so... No uh, way! So we're having some Australian Marin, we're having some Australian garnishes, mm -hmm. we're also having some Australian wine. Do you like it? Ooh. I can't tell if you like it or not. I like it a lot. It's really strong. This is the most excited I've ever been for a dish. Plating, garnishes, meat, beauty. It's just <laughs> everything. That is delightful. I need a moment. I'm gonna like, Ooh. I'm gonna cry. This is far superior meat to lobster. Maybe it's not quite as tender, but the flavor. Flavor, yeah. It up. Oh yeah. It is so good. You want the marin flavor and they doubled up on it. You can really see it come through. The little pearls of the finger lime are next level because you don't taste it until yes. they burst in your mouth. I don't want to finish this because you just don't want this to end. You got some meat loves over here, I'm, though. Wait, that's for, that's for Adam. Yeah, stop, that's for Adam. Look at you, you don't think about our crew, our people. We can get him his own. Whatever. Right? Very good. That was mad oh. good. Double marinated marin. Surprise fact. Ooh. Here's a fact that I got interested in while eating at Cirrus, and I took the time to Google it just now. Lobsters and other shellfish, mm -hmm. like the crayfish we just had, start one color and then turn another when they're cooked. Mm -hmm. and that's because there are a bunch of different pigments in the shell of a lobster, but there's one that's called a stexin thin. A stexin thin. That is the only one that's stable in heat. You think if we uh, threw you in a boiler, what, what, what color would you think would come out? It would just be a burst of light that would sear your retinas. <laughs> Name as many cities as you can in Australia. Go. Perth, Darwin, Sydney, Brisbane, Melbourne, uh, Alice Springs. I also know where we're going because this trip was planned far in advance. It is Melbourne. By the power of movie magic, you will not have to sit with us for the next five hours. Unfortunately, I will. <laughs> it's cold. Melbourne. 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 <laughs> Melbourne. We're in Melbourne. So we're on our way right now to the last seafood spot. What is happening? <laughs> I'm Bernard, I'm the chef de cuisine in Silt Melbourne. Silt is a more of a traditional Cantonese cooking restaurant. Today we're going to introduce the braised green lip abalone. Green lip abalone is one of the most luxurious items you can eat because how it's caught, it's hand dived, they are actually harvested about 40 meters down the sea bay, wow. on, on reefs. Wow. Yeah. You said it's a luxury item, the most luxurious seafood you can yep. get. How much is it to order here? It can be a bit pricey. It's $178 per 100 grams. Do we request, like, I want one kilogram or I want 100 grams? Or... That's correct. Usually a lot of people come in and they, they have a sharing. If you're going to have that for the entree, it's a lot to have. And how would you describe the flavor of abalone? I would say very seafoody. <laughs> it's flavorsome. It's, it's a whole mouthful. We received a live abalone from our, one of our suppliers. We shut them and then we clean off the guards, we clean off the skirtings. After the abalone has been blanched, we fill it in the bag with the stock, with oyster sauce and Chinese wine. I know the traditional way people doing it, they put the abalone straight in the pot. But what we have realized is that it loses its shape. So what we do is we actually sous vide, slow cook it, so it maintains its shape in the flavor, in its own juice. So it's double the flavor. We serve it actually with a Japanese mushroom, served with two bok choy. Very simple. Very simple, very classic. 
but it's very flavorful. What? What is this? <laughs> this is the uh, Mongolian tent at Silks. It's usually not for two people, <laughs> but uh, I, I had to do it. I feel like I'm at a Chinese New Year dinner. Now we've flown all the way to Melbourne to try the green lit abalone. And this is how gold should be served in a subtle, classic way. I like how you now have preferences on how <laughs> gold should be served on your food. It is awesome that this is dived for by hand. Yes. 40 meters down, you basically have to be the ocean version of an astronaut to do that. So a scuba diver? Yeah. <laughs> it smells so good. It smells rich. Cheers. Mm. Wow. Wow. It's pretty good. That's really good. It has a very satisfying texture. It's both firm but supple. Supple. That's like if you took a scallop and an oyster and you combine the flavors together. It is crazy that you have this just solid blob of deliciousness. Yes. How often else does that happen in nature? Shout out to nature. I am so contented. We're in a tent. Video over. Love seafood, it's so good. We had three seafood dishes at two cities. Which seafood was the most worth it to you at its given price? Here's the deal, I had the best oyster I've ever had at Doyle's Oyster Bar at the Sydney Fish Market. I didn't think oysters could be that good, but Cirrus, the grilled marin, worth it winner. That was really one of the best sea creature eating experiences I've ever had. My arm is tired, can you hold this? My turn. So the abalone was quite a steep price, although it was definitely worth the experience. Sydney Fish Market. I thought for sure that was gonna be my worth it winner going in. But all that being said, Sirius is also my worth it winner today. I mean, come on, that place was ridiculous. Adam, what's your worth it winner? Nice. What's it called? Worth it three way? A uh, worth a no, 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 no. Three way worth it winner. It does it. Yeah. For part one. We're here in Australia. We got more coming. We're gonna do wine. We're gonna do steak. Wine. She sells seashells by the seashore. She sells seashells by the seashore. <laughs> oh, yes.